Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So in today's video, I want to show you how you can take a reference image. This is an image that I got from Pixabay. And this image is free for commercial use and no attribution required. So you can find those types of images. Just look for the CCO Creative Commons and double check that you can utilize it within your work. So I want to show you how you can use this to create a cool comic book pose by studying from it. So what I want to first do is actually knock back the opacity of this a little bit. Kudos to whoever this is because that cannot be an easy thing to accomplish. And yeah, it looks like he's flying, which is awesome for comics. So what I want to first do is actually draw through this. Okay, so kind of like tracing. Uh, I know everybody has like this, you know, bad uh, association to tracing. Like you shouldn't trace. But I think there's a certain time when tracing, or in this case studying, is important to do like you can align uh, some of the features you know pay attention to the way the muscles kind of uh, connect together and where they start where they end up you know you've got like the chest here but then you see some of the soloplex here so that's a pretty you know good bit of information to pay attention to the flex of the arm overall so like you know we're gonna make this dynamic anatomy but I just want you to sometimes take the opportunity to pay attention to things like this um, you know, before just, you know, trying to look at it and draw your own thing. I mean, there's there's definitely reasons to do both. So, you know, some, uh, I kind of even like the way the hands tuck back there. So, we'll go with that. And the main thing I think that's important about a shot like this is the foreshortening. So, if you notice, like, look how small the legs get back here and here's the feet. Uh, you know, there's a lot of condensed information that if you just kind of draw it without paying attention to, you know anything realistic it's probably going to be pretty skewed which is fine because there's times you want to make it work without reference you know you want to be able to do both but this can be great for studying so you see how you know parts of the information land now what I want to do or parts of the body I should say you know you see the back comes up here like that so let's go ahead and hide this information now for a moment just to kind of look at this and basic line work you know, in a, in a traced kind of way. Um, so you see right there, that's not a bad pose, even just like that. Uh, but I want to stylize that. I want to, you know, see what's there, and I want to make it, um, you know, more powerful looking, even though this is already a pretty powerful looking pose. Uh, so what I'll do now, let me see if I can kind of fit these all on the canvas here. Let's, uh, let's move the line work. I'm actually somewhat impressed by how well that line work looks because a lot of times you'll trace the human body and it looks a bit strange. In fact, that was going to be my point, but that actually came out pretty decent. But more often than not, you'll trace the human body and it will look really weird. Um, I don't know what it is about that. Just realism to comics are quite a bit different. One thing you can notice, though, is look how skinny, you know, you got to remember this, this bump right here. Is the calf so really his arm is pretty skinny you know because an athletic individual gymnast obviously doing this uh, but look how skinny that arm is so we're definitely gonna beef that up for our character now this could be great for you know a spider-man type character you know you want to keep the uh, limbs relatively thin and uh, you know I always think of a gymnast when I draw spider-man I do tend to give him like a little bit more beefy muscles and things like that but I think that really the most popular pursuit or popular rendition of Spider-Man is more like this. So this would be a great character for uh, for creating a Spider-Man type pose. So let's go ahead and move this over. Let's take our reference, bump back the opacity again, and let's scale this back to here. I just want to try to keep all this on the page. And then now I want to try to do a freehand version of this. And uh, so again, I did this more in a way to study. Since this is a foreshortened shot, I'm going to start with the head, and I'm also going to, you know, probably make him look a, a little bit more tense. You know, he's got a pretty, actually looks like he's just looking down the street. He's not really, <laughs> doesn't look that tense for doing that. Now, if I was doing this particular pose, which I could not, by the way, uh, I, I'm pretty sure my face would be quite a bit different, like probably really red and maybe some tears. I don't know, but this guy looks like he's just having a walk in the park. Um, so yeah, so we'll get the face in place. Uh, I'm going to pay attention to both of these really because what I want to do is I need the major landmarks like the fact that the back comes up 
If you look over here, it's, uh, that would be about where the ear is, so the back comes up over the ear. I might extend that further for a dynamic pose. Look at the, uh, the trap comes down and it points into the shoulder. So that's, uh, that's something to pay attention to. So we'll get that shape in there like that. Uh, you could obviously skip and do like, you know, the upper torso. So we'll get the chest in there like this. And you see the head's already smaller by comparison for what I'm doing. So that's uh, intentional actually. But we can adjust that obviously working digitally. So for the shoulder, we'll just get a big circle in there. We'll do a line back. Remember that you can kind of do this thing where you get a, a curve on the front of the bicep and then an opposite curve for the back of the arm. So kind of like that. And you know you can see that's evident in here, but obviously there's more detail in the arm than just that. Shoulder here, let's align those side to side. And what I like about this, the thing I want to pay attention to, is that notice how his upper arm gets entirely blocked. He's got this big shoulder, which you know that's where they get all their ability to do this move, obviously. So a lot of these guys have really big shoulders, uh, skinnier lower uh, bodies, and things like that. So basically, but the perspective here, the foreshortening, omits that whole upper arm. It goes right from shoulder to forearm. So that's important to notice on something like this. I, I often see whenever we're trying to do a, a pose like this, it's, we fight the urge to not just go, well, here's the upper arm, here's the lower arm, here's the fist. This looks horrible, I know. But see how there's a totally different representation and all of a sudden it doesn't look as well thought out. So just keep that in mind. It goes right from shoulder to forearm. And it looks a bit strange in an outline version. And I think that's why when we go to redraw this, we kind of force uh, objects in there, you know, parts of the body that, that otherwise would get omitted. Because when we go to draw the outline like this, it looks quite strange. It's like, oh, it doesn't even look right. It looks like a form just floating out in the middle of nowhere. But in realism, from this perspective, that's what you'd get. So let's just draw that in. And we'll just ignore it for a minute. So it's a lot of times you got to be able to just look through the work and see uh, past it. You know, instead of going, well, this doesn't look right. Let me start over. Let me start over. In all reality, it doesn't look right because you haven't got to a level to refine it yet. So now paying attention to the anatomy a little more. I really like how the arms got that real deep bend right there. So if I erase the, uh, or I'm on a different layer in it. If you just ignore this part right there, look at that, that deep bend, and I'm lacking that over here. So what's neat about paying attention to stuff like this is it makes you realize, oh, I have an incorrect view of the way I think a uh, certain part of the body should react. And that's where, you know, reference is so important. You know, so you get people that are like, oh, I never look at pictures. I never look at reference. And, you know, chances are uh, you're going to see that in their work or they're just flat out lying and they don't want to tell anybody that they study from photos. You should study from photos. Um, I'm not saying you need to do it all the time, but it's the homework portion of your drawing. Um, just like, um, you know, a lot of people think tracing is bad, but as long as you're using it to learn, tracing can be a, a huge, uh, you know, beneficial way to study because you're, you're tracing what's really there. It's making you look at it in a more detailed way. Uh, so that arm still looks a bit strange to me. I think I want it much bigger. I like how here, I mean, look at the distance. If you were to map the distance from here to here and then go across the other side, uh, you know, it's the longest portion in this shot is from the shoulder to the arm here. So we got to keep that in mind. And I think that actually this arm could stand to be longer by comparison or larger by comparison. And even tilted further back. Well, let's look at the reference again. If we go from the top of the head, we go over. So the hand's actually a little bit higher. Okay, and it's a lot higher there. So right, we'll just go with it for now. But you can see there's a difference there. Uh, but again, I do want to stylize this a bit. So I'm not going to worry about it being exactly uh, the same. But I do want certain things. Like I want to see this uh, upper part of the the rib cage that kind of peeks through. I think that's an important feature to nailing this uh, dimension of this pose. And now we got to work back and notice that the, I would say this is about his waist to the hip area is like to the top of the bicep. So right there, get that in place. We've got to start pushing this information up and back and notice that the foot as badly as I traced it there, 
uh, lines up to the midsection of the form. Right, so maybe we do that, or maybe if we want to change it a bit, you know, we got to remember to be imaginative with it. Maybe we bring the connection point where it should be, and then we point that foot back. So let's try that, see if that works. Does that work? I don't know. We'll try it though. So here's our, our rough sketch, and you know, if you know me, I, I'm going to use these uh, circles here. I don't want to waste anything. I'm going to use these circles like this, and now they're not rings for a gymnast. It's uh, power emanating. You know, I like doing power, so and making weird sound effects as I draw. Uh, so something like that. So he's got this power emanating. Maybe that's kind of how he flies around. Now notice the other thing I've omitted. I brought this leg down, and it feels forced to put the other leg back here. So I'm going to probably omit that, but all I need to do is just redraw it further back where you get just barely the foot here, and then it makes more sense to have the other thigh back here. Um, but I did, it, I did it lower, so I don't know if that'll work. But now what I want to do, I just want to show you the uh, you know, kind of the transformation of this process. Uh, let me do this because those markers are on the other side. Let me copy and paste this. Oh, and uh, I should have started the video with this. You guys are probably wondering why I'm using Sketchbook Pro because I typically use like Manga Studio or I maybe don't show the interface. I used to use Sketchbook Pro a lot more. Uh, I've actually been using it more lately again because they made it free, which I already was paying for it. So I just quit having to pay for it. But I wanted to make sure to mention that in the video. Again, I should have started the video this way because I want people to know that, hey, they made this uh, free and it's pretty darn good. The, the desktop version. I'm not a big fan of the iPad version, but, uh, you know, I know other people seem to love it. I just uh, I like Procreate for the iPad and Sketchbook Pro for drawing on the desktop. So, yeah, so it's free. Check it out. Uh, so, yeah, so let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger now. Now here's here's another thing I want to show you is that I'm actually going to take the reference. Uh, a lot of times I'll get to this point. I'll just hide the reference altogether. But there is something I want to pay attention to with the reference still, and that's the anatomy of the shoulder. In fact, I might just do this. Let's just bring it up and slide it over because really what I want to, again, pay attention to is just the uh, shapes within the anatomy of the shoulders and a little bit of the forearm. So. Again, if I don't feel like I need that assistance, uh, I'm just going to get rid of that at this point and just draw. Uh, which I recommend, again, trying it in a variety of ways so that you can really find your strengths. And go, as soon as you hide it, if you start struggling, maybe you can look at that and go, okay, I really need help on learning my uh, arm anatomy. I don't remember where these muscles go. Uh, so I'm going to leave that in place just for studying sake. But now what I want to do is I really want to stylize this and make it look more comic book-esque. So I'm going to really uh, make the anatomy a bit more dynamic, which I don't know, this person's actually pretty chiseled, but I'll, uh, I'll try to spruce it up a bit. But I like how, you know, paying attention to how big that shoulder comes out. You know, there's a lot of power on the shoulders and you wanna uh, it sounds funny, but you want to harness that. You want to harness that power uh, for your comic illustrations because it does. It makes them look a lot more believable if they have this kind of strength about them, I think, anyway. So, uh, so you see he's got a very defined shoulder. You can see those muscles uh, pretty easily. Uh, I'm obviously stylizing them. This is the way I like to draw shoulder muscles. So I'm kind of implementing my own style as I do this. I'm going to do a lot more segmentation. Uh, to the chest muscles, they sprawl out from the middle and they kind of tuck under the shoulder. So you see me kind of doing that. You don't see his collarbones really. I mean, there's a little bit of evidence of them there, but I'll probably draw this little V shape. So this is really where I'm just letting kind of my uh, style of the way that I would do characters start to you know fill in the blanks basically. Um, I do want to pay attention again, maybe in the line work here, how the the traps come down to the middle of the shoulder and they they take on you know their own um, kind of silhouette like they they protrude out uh, in, in a de huh. I'm sorry I'm having a tough time finding the words here they're so defined that they protrude out and you see another line here so you got the line of the back so this is more the back muscle and then you got the trapezius that comes out and is very evident so we're gonna go ahead and do that 
Uh, I may need to raise the uh, head up so it looks like it's sitting right on the um, collarbones there, and I, I don't like that. And you don't even, you know, it doesn't look like that over here. So I think it needs to go up and over just a little bit. So let's just grab this, move it up, and over just a little. And then we can see some of that neck, some of that sternocleidomastoid come up to the ear. And again, I'm going to throw in this kind of a little bit more definition than you see on this particular character. You know, you see actually he's got a pretty big neck and it goes right from the back of the ear and it comes down like that. Um, so I should probably get some of that because that's, that's really, you're going to see these muscles kind of connect through there. Here's the ear. So yeah, this is a great way to study. And, uh, you know, one thing I will tell you about this type of exercise, it's not going to probably work the first time you do it. So be ready for that. Uh, like anything else, it usually very rarely works, seldomly works the very first time you try it. But the thing is, is that through doing this over and over, you'll start to pinpoint what is working and why. And then you'll get more effective at implementing your style. And don't feel guilty about doing this. A lot of professional artists that I've met do exactly what we're doing here. Some take their own photos. And if you work out, that's probably a little easier. Uh, I know I'm not going to be doing the, uh, I think these are called the iron rings or something. I'm not going to be doing those anytime soon. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, you can work out and take advantage of uh, any definition you got. Uh, but you can also just get used to looking through the photo and just grasping the main information, the bone structure, the, the way the flow of the anatomy goes. And then using your own style to uh, make it a bit your own. You know, that's what... It's what a lot of these artists are doing. They're just taking uh, their ability to add a cool rendering style over top of what's there. So now I'm actually looking at the reference less and less for this part because I've drawn this type of arm pose, a, I don't know, a thousand times. I don't know how many times I've drawn arms like this. But, you know, I've got enough of the base information. You see I'm changing it. I'm not curling the wrist as much because this is obviously him holding up all his weight on that. This is more like a straight fist shot where he's just kind of got his arms back. I do like to pay attention over here to the shoulder. Look how many shapes there are. I'm going to kind of over embellish it or exemplify it. Look at that. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, muscle shapes going on right there. We don't need to get every bit of that, but it's better than saying, oh, here's a circle. It just doesn't isn't going to read well. Um, so we're going to try to get some of those striations in where you see the divide and the separation of the muscle. You even see some of the, the trap kind of coming over a little bit, and we get some of that in. But the main thing is that they they create their own pockets, or bulges, I guess, and they're not just uh, even. It's not an even oval or anything like that, or ellipse, or whatever it is. But And then for this part of the forearm, uh, the main thing I want to get in place is, I can't remember the name of this muscle, uh, digitorum or something. The, the, I think these are the digitorums that go back from here and they connect to the uh, fingers. And forgive me, I should be better at my terminology for anatomy. I've actually been studying anatomy a lot lately. I should know these, but uh, it's just so many darn terms and oh, it's all Latin and craziness, but I'll get there eventually. I want to teach... Uh, some stuff on dynamic anatomy, but I feel like I need to learn all the terminology first, so before I really cover that one. But uh, yeah, and also here I'm going to give him a downturn, you know, kind of mean look. So I'll just kind of place some of those features, get that going like that. Again, I wanted this uh, sternum, upper rib cage, to really be evident because I think that really makes the shot. And and I just want to point out, even at this stage, like. I'm looking at this and going, it's so beneficial to do this because I'm not saying I couldn't draw a pretty good representation of this pose, but it wouldn't have been this good. It would have been lacking something. And now I'm looking at this pose and going, man, with a few revisions of the artwork, I could make this into a really cool shot of, you know, either my own character, which is what I was kind of thinking, uh, or if I could, you know, this could easily be a Superman pose minus this really bad foot I just did here what I did is I actually drew the foot it looks like it's coming out sideways like that 
uh, common mistake for me when trying to do uh, foreshortening, uh, especially on feet. It's like, Rob Liefeld, I know how you feel, dude. They're not easy. Feet suck. Uh, but yeah, so let's see here. Let's bring the foot, the heel right here. That's going to be the most predominant one because we really want to tuck this back. And then we want to overlap the lower pad of the foot like this. So hopefully that reads better. It's still a kind of wonky looking foot. And I'm actually going to exclude this back thigh. I know over here it's very apparent. And if I revisit this a couple times, I could definitely get that into place. But I'm just going to perceive that the other foot, remember to always draw through. So I'm going to perceive the other foot comes like this. And, you know, these legs are back here or something. So uh, I think on mine, I'm going to go with this. So the main thing is this, that, you know, in a reasonable amount of time, I was able to, again, harness, <laughs> it sounds so funny, uh, I was able to harness bits of uh, the information from this very dynamic, awesome pose. Uh, so that's that's really the purpose of this particular video. I, I'm not going to take this one too much further because I don't, I don't really need to uh, draw this in full detail um, to get you to understand it. I just want you to... I want you to understand how to develop your own poses and how to study from life and and learn from it. You know, like for instance, like right here now, we could add in lots of cool shading of the ribs, you know, figure out some, uh, maybe want to overdevelop the muscles in the leg, whatever. So you can keep picking away at this. And again, this is the part where you're going to implement your own style. Um, and to do that, I would probably, at this point, hide the reference. So... Thanks very much, dude. Your awesome move helped us come up with this art piece. See you later. And so now we can take this one and make it a bit larger. You know, we've got these great uh, sketches for reference for something else, but there's a lot of great information right here to come up with a pretty dynamic superhero. So, you know, we just have to keep refining it, do something cool with the powers, Give him some suit design, make his, if he has hair, make it, you know, waving in the wind, blowing in the wind kind of thing. And really, you know, try to pull it all together and make something um, neat out of it. But with a couple revisions of our style, you know, not many people would know that we were looking at a, at that pose. They would just see the end result of this and go, wow, that, that looks pretty neat. Or maybe they're like... That sucks. Nobody would ever make that pose and it doesn't look realistic, not knowing that we actually studied from realism. So yeah, so at any rate, I just wanted to bring you this video. Um, let me know what you think and let me know what else you'd like to see on the channel and uh, what other types of studies you might like to see. But I think this is a very important thing. So let me give you a couple tips on what great reference might be. Remember, you can use Pixabay and that's uh you know, free uh, images for the most part. Check the uh, licenses on them and stuff like that, depending on your use for it. And think about, like, gymnastics. Think about, you know, boxing's great for the overall upper body anatomy and punches, obviously, UFC, things like that. But they also have gloves on their hands, which can, you know, so you, what you got to do there is you have to mix in some hand gestures. But you can create hand gestures on your own with your camera from your phone, stuff like that. So get used to snapping a lot of different hand poses. Uh, and you really can build a pretty nice library of this stuff and uh, start making your life a lot easier and not you know, drawing the same boring poses all the time. Uh, and yeah, I, I feel like just by doing this with you guys, I learned a bit about the shoulders, this uh, upper chest. I mean, you know, can it be better? Yes, but I feel like I learned through that process. So that's probably the biggest part. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe, all that jazz. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.